This is the hour of banquet and of song. This is the heavenly table spread for you here. Let us feast, and feasting still prolong the brief, bright hour of fellowship with thee. Amen. You know, I want to jump in, but you are here at 11 o'clock because of that psalm sung just moments ago. Thank you, Jeffrey Smith. Thank you, Michael and Michael. Thank you, choir. Amen. It's exactly, it's exactly why you're here at this hour. That was a blessing. That was a blessing. So there are those bold enough to lift up their voice and join the chorus of bravos after the first encore stage call at the opera. And then there are those who just sit politely, applauding, gently, wishing perhaps they could join in the bravos. There are those fool enough to allow themselves to be strapped into the harness of an oversized kite, and then there are those who sit in their cars, watching, wondering what it might be like to hang glide. There are those who insist in using only real cream in their coffee. And then there are those who, who, who always opt for the healthy option, politely decline or settle for some coffee, mate. Hmm. Do you remember walking down the country mile of your youth, companions in stride, thrilled that your parents were finally letting you launch out on your own just a bit? This time it was down to the overpass at the river bend. There was no question everyone was going, a kind of summer's rite of passage. The pavement was hot, dead snakes littered the side of the road. You were as excited as you were scared, as thrilled as you were terrified, heart beating twice its normal pace. Finally, you arrive. Billy knows you're there for the first time with, with the kids from the neighborhood, and he dares you to jump off the bridge first. Thankfully, cooler heads prevail, and someone swims out first to check the depth of the river to clear debris from underneath the bridge, and then one by one, each of the boys and girls take their position over the water mid-bridge, and they jump. In just a few seconds, you can see heads bobbing in the river below. Bright, ear-to-ear -ear grins across every face. And you, well, they all seemed to know what they were doing. But you may as well have been atop the Empire State Building you start, you stop, you decide this is not for you, begin to walk away, and then somewhere from the ground of your being, something screams for you to jump. No longer thinking, in, in the flash of an instant of a moment, you do. The water's freezing, your, your scalp's beginning to tingle, and you think, so this is what it's like to be alive. I think that's what I want to be when I grow up. I, I, I want to be alive. That's what I want to be. The, the rhythm of feast and feria and famine. The rhythm of joy and boredom and ordinary time. The call of the extreme. The call away from the ordinary. This is the stuff of life. This is the stuff of being human and in the kingdom of God. The few of us, I think, who, who really know the thrill of extremes. We're, we're taught from just the time we can walk, be cautious at street corners, be cautious uh, with, with strangers, be, be cautious at every turn. Uh, save, save your money, build a reputation, protect a reputation, tend to other responsibilities, but be cautious, be wise. Being cautious is about being wise, we're taught. And so from the books we read, to the art we patronize, to the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the friends we make, the people we help, the churches where we worship, we're cautious. We're careful. We think we're wise. But, but let's face it, 
American cheese will never have the body of a robust Emmentaler. <laughs> a, 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 a plastic champagne glass will never take the place of a real glass. And a Nutrisystem frozen dinner will never rival the turkey pot pie your grandmother makes. The Coca-Cola bottled in Mexico will never stack up to Coke Zero, even if you pick yours up in Chattanooga. <laughs> it's, it's not about going for the gusto here. Not somehow because life's too short. This is about learning to celebrate without reservation. And in doing so, finding God. In doing so, giving your, your whole being, all of your heart to God. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a marriage feast given by a king for his son. The very first thing we learn as Jesus tells this story is that all of those who would rightfully know about these things, that is to say, all of, all of those who have spent their lives honing party skills, they find better things to do than to party with the king and his son. Some head back to their farms, some to their businesses, while others make sport of waylaying the messengers. Not another party. I mean, what's up with the king? But, but not wanting the best of bands to play to an empty hall, the doors are thrown open, bouncers are given the night off, and everyone within earshot of the promoter's bullhorn is issued the invitation to come. Everyone is gathered in. The text says everyone good and bad. Notice that word bad there. It doesn't read reformed. It doesn't say everyone good and reformed. It, it, it doesn't read everyone who's penitent. Everyone who was good and penitent. It doesn't even read everyone who's good and about to change their ways. <laughs> he invites the good and the bad in. All those folks who've likely never done this kind of thing before, they're given entrance and license to throw down with the king. The unkempt, the unemployed, those without homes, the sick, the suffering, those with Zika, the prejudiced, the oppressed, the tax collectors, the prostitutes. Early Christians would have seen themselves as slaves in this story, or at least among those coming in off the street along with the good and the bad, to accept the otherwise declined invitation. They may have even been a bit smug in their newly found inclusion, the new opportunity for celebration. But Matthew puts a little spin on this parable that absolutely prohibits any sense that the celebration is an inherited privilege. One of the party guests is found to be inappropriately dressed and is challenged. Not a lesson in etiquette. Not another legalism God's people must jump through. Apparently this one person has checked the I'm coming box on his Evite and he's shown up. But still he's hesitant in some way. He's refusing to enter into the fullness of the celebration. He's holding back his heart and soul. This person, though included in the kingdom, has refused to let the party the celebration transform his being and his preparation. He said yes, but he seemed simply tired by it all. He's sitting in the banquet hall, but refusing to join the feast. And when confronted by the king, the guest is condemned by his own silence and a heart that refuses to spring to life. The enigmatic, for many are called but few are chosen, has less to do with some predetermined salvation as it does with challenging the faithful to persevere to the end. Being called, it refers to taking up the invitation. Being chosen refers to entering into the feast with your whole being, body, mind, and soul, persevering to the end. On Wednesday afternoons, I'll sit up by the high altar there 
with children age three to third grade for scripture saints and song we always start with one story from scripture sing a few songs come back and kind of recapitulate on that story and often at the end i'll say something like this you know we've just told a story together and it is a story with figures that seem far off and distant maybe not exactly here but know this one day whatever the story was one day this story will be yours. And this story, this story of the feast and the guest and the, the disinterested, unprepared one who's said yes but sits on the sidelines, that's our story. Every Sunday, as you walk in this place, it's your story. You're invited to the Feast of Feasts, the Eucharistic Feast, the, the extraordinary Feast of Discipleship that the church offers. When, when Christ's church mission statement says that, that we are called to be disciples, evangelists, servants, stewards, and friends, the fullness of the feast is put before you. When you're asked to give sacrificially each fall, the fullness of the feast is put before you. You're asked to open the invitation and jump in week when that the listing of, of the, the various and sundry things offered from the heart and soul of this community is read you're bidden to come each week when you encounter the stranger the newcomer the visitor in our midst you you should have this parable come to mind and be urged to jump don't hold back i mean you're, you're already here what is it that you're waiting for it's the feast of victory for our god and the exercise of worship, the exercise of the liturgy, it's our dance of joy. It's the heart of our song, the festival of our salvation. You may have access to the kingdom and this feast by virtue of invitation and baptism, but it's your heart that God wants. To sit in the banquet hall desiring to dance, but never finding the courage to step out onto the dance floor, that's to forfeit the joy of your invitation. Give God everything. Don't hold back. Jump. For this day your presence has been requested at a feast. The marriage feast of the Lamb. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, your ways are not ours. Your thoughts are not like ours. You invited us and everyone around us to the banquet of abundant life. Some have declined. Others were curious but have wandered off. A few of us have come but, but now largely seem disinterested. By the power of your Spirit, open our hearts this morning. Help us make ready for this banquet. Teach us what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. Give us the courage to step out and into the arms of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.